Hey, Dave Hall with Silent Warrior Foundation. One more item that uh, popped out of Phil's archives was this interesting vest for people that are fascinated by old school special operations gear. I think you're going to enjoy this. Phil, would you take us through this modified vest and, and what it was for and how you used it? Sure. This was, uh, uh, and, and, and some of the guys started this early on, and you may see some of the guys with this vest on when, when we did the Operation Eagle Claw, but later on most of us got a vest and modified it. This is standard Air Force survival nylon vest, uh, knit green. We would get these in brand new, and the first thing we would do is cut everything off of them. Uh, and then decide, you know, most guys had an idea what they wanted to put on on their vest. This one has actually been modified. It was cut on top and the extension, because I'm a tall guy, and I didn't want the vest way up high. I wanted it to ride down a little bit more. So we had extensions sewed in here so the vest would actually hang a little bit lower. Uh, again, we got the comms unit, and on the left side, much like the field jacket we talked about, we've got a pouch that the tourniquet goes in, and we got a pouch for pressure dressings. The pouches on the belt were designed for either uh, uh, M16, uh, at the time we had the XM177, the mm -hmm. old... The, 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 the big old, moderator on them? Yeah, with the, mm -hmm. with, with, with the big one on Vietnam ear until... We shot those till we'd shot the barrels out and bullets were keyhole and tumbling as they were going down range. But this is also modified so you could put two MP5 magazines in here oh, if you weren't okay. carrying the other one. So you could either carry the based on the mission. If you were going with a long gun, you put those in. But all of these were modified so you could uh, put those in. Again, the radio went around back. And I'll show you this real quick. The earpiece and the throat mic uh, that went with this then. So that went around and we had the, and this didn't fit very well. And as you can see, I had double-sided tape to help hold that in. Oh yeah. So so it would it would go into your ear when, when you put it around your ear. We first saw these with 2-2 SAS using them. Mm -hmm. And then, then we started using them. And then we had the throat mic. Uh, that 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 plugged in here, and then the radio was on the back. Now that was really useful uh, when implementing a gas mask. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, this pouch I carried miscellaneous. I'm not even sure what's in here. Uh, let's let's just take a look and be surprised. Well, there you go. Earplugs just, and 45 rounds. Just, just like if it wasn't there, it'd be rolling around yeah, in your dryer yeah, yeah, somewhere, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of times, you know, you'd have your gun, you wouldn't have one in the chamber. Yeah. Or or whatever, and before you went in, you made sure everything was loaded up and good to go. There's actually another earplug in there. That's hilarious. But uh, on the belt itself. This is actually a custom rigger made cross draw holster. Uh, I kind of designed it, and the riggers made it. It's got a piece of plastic stiffener in it. Uh, on the outside is the chocolate chip camouflage that's been dyed black, and on the inside is just slick nylon. And uh, I used that numerous times. I think I so showed you some pictures of when we were getting ready for yeah, the Olympics. I was Olympics. actually kind of surprised to see the cross draw in action with uh, you guys. That was pretty pretty interesting. And and, and uh, we had those. I had pouches on the outside. What is not on the outside of this is pouches that were dyed black that I carried my 45 magazines in. And again, on the bottom of the vest, we sold tabs, sewed tabs on. So we could actually attach a belt and it could be down lower where you need. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my additional jobs was breaching an EOD, so I carried a toolkit with side cutters and what we referred to as the old demo. Yeah, demo knife. Dem demo knife. So a quick question on your extensions. You're a tall guy, so I can see why you would put that in there just because of that. But did this also buy you some space if you use body armor? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, on the back side, there's nothing much on the back side. We still had some pouches that I could put some things into. Uh, we had the adjustment in the back and I adjusted it to where I needed it, taped it up. Again, we had the tabs on the back for the holster. And then we had a bag. This one's still, well, look, oh, old sweat rag that you need. And look at that, flex yeah. cuffs in case we need to flex cuff somebody. That's right. Uh, but this was also designed so if you did, weren't carrying anything, you could bunch it up 
and have a smaller pouch. But yeah, and if you needed if you needed more space, then you could open it up if you needed to carry something in there and uh, put it in there, which usually this stayed in my suitcase. And on the back side of the holster, you can see because the back side of the holster, right. you can see that part wasn't died <laughs> uh, as, as we stated before but uh i see i noticed in a couple of the other pouches you had on the front they, they look like they had something in them and before somebody asked and can we research what might be in there because i guarantee what pouches? I, I think i think we checked all of them that was the tourniquet I talked okay, about right that. Okay, right on. And, and that—that is the bandages. Oh, right dressing. on. Okay, so that pressure was co dressing. common to yeah, that, you your field yeah, jacket. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Le right left on. side. And then there were a couple other I had sewed on for, you know, what what whatever you may need. Yeah. You know, but uh, yeah, I wore that numerous deployments and 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 times. But some of the guys went ahead and dot, tried to die. The nylon wouldn't take the dye very well, mm -hmm. so a lot of guys went ahead and tried to dye theirs. And you will see pictures of some of the guys that had these and dyed them. Mm -hmm. But uh, very cool, very cool. That's the. Now you can go buy all kinds of armor carriers, assault vests, and all mm -hmm. that other kind of stuff that are custom made. But this is before you could buy anything. Uh, had to think in your mind, okay, what do I want it to do? How do I want it to work? And then if you didn't like a pouch here, you could always cut it off and go over and say, hey, no, I want it right over here. <laughs> and have it sewed back yep. on. Awesome. Thanks again for taking the time. If you guys like this kind of content, believe me, I'm being surprised by what is dropping out of the sky lately. Stay tuned. I can't even begin to think of what might come next. Dave Hall with the Silent Warrior Foundation with retired Sergeant Major Phil Hansen. Very generous. Run through his gear. Silent Warrior Foundation out.